hello everyone how are you doing welcome back to my channel if this is your first time my name is couscous and if you're a returning subscriber you are welcome you know how much i love you so we have been doing the chiming scholarship um series if you're among those that uh, want to apply for the chiming scholarship this year then this video is for you because i've, I've done like three videos on chiming scholarship already and in those videos i have said that if you have any questions, you should drop it down in the comment section that I'm going to answer. <laughs> I'm going to come back and, you know, make this video answering all your questions. And that's why this video is here. So welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Because it is not just student scholarship that I share here. I share other scholarships as well. I share tips on personal development, career advancement, and lifestyle. So much fun on this channel. So welcome to this um video welcome to this channel today and do well to like this video do well to share it to people that you know that it's going to be of help do not just enjoy this content alone share it spread the good news so that it will also get to other people so stay tuned don't go away i'm just going to run through your questions on my youtube channel on my instagram and some people also ask on whatsapp so i'm just going to run through these questions answer them for you so that you will get your applications ready. do not go away give um those that ask their questions on youtube priority so i'm gonna answer their questions first because i already said that you should drop your questions under the comment section of the videos and yeah let's go elisa says hi person my congratulations on your achievement scholarship i plan on applying for this achievement scholarship and i would love to know how the interview went and what questions were asked okay so basically i i feel like uh, talking about interview now will be so sudden we'll be you know trying to run ahead of your shadows because for now it's basically about your submitting your applications and that's what um it's really important for you right now what you should do is get your essays ready get your documentations ready and submit your application when you now progress to the interview level we can talk about the interview there's so much to talk about but for now let's focus on the application process so grace grace Sudopia says dear Chris, dear Chris, once again i'm grateful for your achievement and i have watched and listened to your video on the achievement scholarship application thank you <laughs> then she says for me i'm interested in international development and human rights how do i go about this particularly with reference to three points i noted in your videos one the right referee two partner university three university and related acceptable courses for the ACs. More so, would you mind reviewing my essay? <laughs> so basically, when it has to do with the referees, I have a video on referee, which I think I'm going to drop it here for you guys to watch. If you haven't watched that video, I have said everything that has to do with the kind of referees and um, how you should go about it. So Grace, with respect to your referee, I don't think you should tie your course, the course you want to do to your referee because applying for your, you know, applying to schools and applying um, to scholarship organizations, basically they will most times ask you for your academic reference and work reference. So what you're going to do is get your immediate boss um, to write you a, a work reference and then get your lecturer in your university to write you an academic reference It could be a professor. It could be a dean of law Just get a lecturer with a very good reputation to write you your reference letters different schools state what your referee should write in the reference letter so Based on the, their requirements you would forward these requirements to your referee so that he is going to answer these questions based on the requirements that they ask of him and if they don't if they haven't outlined the requirements that they want yalla very good let your referee write about your academic capacity your leadership capacity and your ability to be, to be able to take on a postgraduate course and if it is a, um, a reference letter for your scholarship let your referee you know write why you're the very best candidate to be given that scholarship i hope i've answered that question grace then when it has to do with partner universities like 
I said if you have plenty of the children scholarship I'll advise you to go directly to the children websites and do the course search on their websites all the universities that they are going to show you that are offering your courses would likely be a partner university which you will not have any issues and I, I had said earlier that most universities in UK are partner universities to the children's scholarship so you will not even have any problem if you want to go to University of Oxford, University of Cambridge, University of Warwick, Queen Mary University of London, <laughs> any university at all, um, UCL, King's College, almost all these universities are partner universities to the children's scholarship uh, you know so what I'm gonna say is try to start your course search on the children's website um, so that you will see the universities that are offering your courses that's it okay so what it has to do with um university and related acceptable courses yes yeah, so because you want to do international development and human rights it doesn't mean that all the schools that you've been able to identify are going to that their courses are definitely going to be that name but they may have similar modules it can be oh international public policy and human rights it can be um international development and things like that it can just be they may name the course in a different way but that doesn't mean that it is not what you want what you you should do to identify the courses to identify if the courses are right for you are to open up the modules and check okay this is what i want oh there's human rights i want that there's public policy i want that is international law there's dispute resolution so in the in the modules and that is how you know that the course is right for you and then the aces like she says okay the aces so when it has to do with writing your aces you already it's good that you already know the course you want to write so try as much as possible to reflect in the question that has to do with why you want to study the course you want to study your why you have chosen the university and how it aligns with your pro, uh, previous professional development and your future career goals so when it has to, if you haven't I've, I've made if my previous video talked about how you should answer those questions and if i want to start over again it may take so much time so i'll tell i'll advise grace to go back and watch that video and that's how you will know how to answer that question so try to write your essay in such a way that you are able to show why you want to choose international development and human rights try to show that your previous professional experience um has given you background to why you want to study that course um i think i've said everything so grace that's basically it go back to the last two videos i have made on how to write your essays so that you know how best to tailor your essays to fit your the course that you have chosen and the university and with your career goals i hope i've answered your question grace if i've answered your question do well to give this video a thumbs up like this video share it to people that you know that are, are applying to, uh, for children's scholarship this year and really need help please share this video to them so that it will also help them okay so adenka tomilola <laughs> sorry if i pronounce your name wrongly adenka says congratulations thank you if you're given admission already into a UK university, are you to defer the admission till you are offered the children's scholarship? I also want to ask about the interview. How was it like? I've already said that I'm not gonna talk about the interview now until you are shortlisted for interview. When you're when you have progressed um, from the application to the interview level, come back. We're gonna talk about it. We are gonna break the interview table. Okay, so um you're talking about if you've already gotten admission, yes. If you already got, if you have already gotten admission in a UK university and you know that you may not be able to fund your studies, it's perfect to defer it until you're able to secure a scholarship. So that's fine. So if you already have the admission and you want to apply, maybe you're at the admission this year and you want to apply for the children um, scholarship for next year, you can defer the admission this year. Then when you're filling your application form, you fill in the school and you know and you even you upload your admission offer in the application so it doesn't change anything you can still use that okay that's fine you can use that um, admission that you got the previous year to proceed with your 2021 gym application so um pineal says congratulations Kuseme. thank you pineal i'd like to ask if it's okay to share details of what the interview session was like why does anybody ask about interview see let me tell you the interview should be the least thing you should worry about because you know how it's very easy to convince somebody when you're sitting face to face with them or when they can see you even if your interview is virtual but they can see you you can see them you guys are talking they can read your body language they can see your passion through the interview like you know but if you are shortlisted 
for interview then your job is very easy the job for you now is to try to convince them in your essay try to capture the attention of your reviewer in your essay that is the only way that you will be shortlisted for interview and trust me once you're shortlisted for interview like i said come back we're gonna talk about it we are going to like interview is the least thing you should worry about right now and peter to me say to me she <laughs> says does the scholarship cover application fees too um so i don't know what you mean by application fees but the chimney application does not require you to pay any money but then when you now apply to university some universities um you know request for application fees that is on you <laughs> if you just apply to university that would charge application fee you would have to pay that and application fees are not always much they are basically between i think they are not always up to hundred dollars i don't think so yeah because i know that i paid i applied to like um i applied to lots of universities i out of all the universities i applied to i think i only had to pay application fee for just one university and that was from my pocket so yes the junior scholarship application doesn't require you to pay any fees but then if you choose a university that requires application fee yes you're gonna pay with your money <laughs> Adebayo Julius says, I believe the scholarship is extended to PhD as well. Is there any condition like going back to your home country after the study? Sorry, Adebayo, the Chibling Scholarship is only for one year master's degree in UK. It's not for PhDs, but I know that there are several other scholarships that cover PhD. I would advise you to go back and watch my video on um the one i made on scholarships for canada australia those ones i am sure that i mentioned the scholarship that is for phd but then he says are you required to come back to your country yes the children's scholarship requires that you come back to your country and stay for at least two years this is because they are basically sponsoring you to go and learn skills and come back to impact your country so yes they are going to ask you to go back to your country if you don't want to go back to your country but i don't apply Thank you so much everyone i do win and say congratulations schools thank you for sharing and we are waiting for the follow-up video on friday yes definitely i'm gonna drop this video like <laughs> joshua 20 says what's the degree required to be chosen for children's scholarship is it a first class second class of our lower division or a third class universities for polytechnic a upper credit or lower credit oh joshua Basically, I'm not going to say that I know the degree or the qualification that children need, but I'm just going to say that I have I have colleagues who made first class. I have colleagues who made 2-1. I have colleagues who made 2-2. I don't know about any of my colleagues that made third class, but I don't think your academic qualifications are going to hinder your children application. Like I always say, the most important factor of a children application is demonstration of leadership capacity and the drive to cause a change in your environment it has nothing to do with your academic qualification um okay if if, if you doubt me how about the 60 year old lady that got a children's scholarship this year is she going to go and bring her degree certificate of 19 something something to come and uh, <laughs> to come and use her so so imagine they had to judge her with that no way so it's basically your leadership capacity and your drive so what it has to do with polytechnics i know that the techniques now you have to do um an nd i don't know how you guys do it but i know that after your hnd you can go for nyc so basically you know basically that you can just apply guys just apply a very says the laughter is contagious oh thank you congrats couscous thank you please regarding the needed two years work experience before application does it have to be work related to one's field of study and can an internship or volunteering count as work experience very good question i know that i have talked about this work experience over and over and over again please go to the very first streaming streaming video i made um i think that's like two videos back or three videos back please go and watch that video you will know what work experience means but to cut the long story short it doesn't have to relate to your the course that you want to do it doesn't have to relate to it at all just show that you have been working volunteering is in there internship is in there just show that you have been working and you have been making impact that's basically what work experience means and it doesn't mean that you have to be working since 2017 2018 to make it two years you can 
it could be different work experiences as long as cumulatively they add up to two years if you want to know what two years work experience means go back to my videos i'm probably going to drop that video here so that you would watch it and understand what it means who of an on tv says impressive thank you and a particular quote says cause i joined in laughing <laughs> you just have to laugh Nice one, congratulations, baby. Thank you so much. Go, girl. I'm here to cheer you up. Yeah, yeah, my cheerleaders. Yeah, yeah, my cheerleaders. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the next question is from Samuela Kukwa Amisa. I love that name. She says, Hi, Kuz. Do you need IELTS as a requirement for the Chilling Scholarship? Hi, Amisa. You do not need um IELTS for the current achievement scholarship application. Isn't that good news? The IELTS requirement has been waived for the 2020 achievement scholarship application. But do take note that if you're making an application to a university who requires you to submit a, a IELTS test or an English proficiency test, you are going to you know have to take the test and submit. That has nothing to do with achievement, okay? Alina Alina Fair Nyasulu, I'm so sorry for bothering your name. Say, should I write only one example? Um, you, I want to understand, I want to believe that what you're trying to say is should you cite just one example in your essays? Um, consider the fact that you have just 500 words to write in each of these essays. I'm not going to tell you that you should cite just one example, but just bring your best foot forward and make sure that you stick uh, within the word count the 500 limit word count write as much as as much examples as you can within that but make sure that you like write the best don't go and bring irrelevant examples and be scattering around one very good example is better than three or five irrelevant examples okay like i said if you really want to know how best to write your essays go back to my last two videos and watch and come back and thank me later Wilfred says, Hi Kuskus, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Please, is there a personal mentoring channel? <laughs> Should I start a personal mentoring channel? Guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section if you would like me to start a personal mentoring channel. Okay? Basically, what I'm doing is mentoring. Just that I'm mentoring all of you because I love you all. Okay? But let me know in the, in the comment section if you would like that. Cipran says, thank you, Couscous. Thank you so much, Cipran. Peter says, this your smell is something to love and catch. <laughs> thank you so much, Peter. FM Story says, well done, Kuseme. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, so Peculiar says, hello, thanks for putting this out there. Thank you, you're welcome. But will the essay be written online or we have to convey to a place? Oh, Peculiar. No way. You are writing your essays online. You're not going anywhere. That's that's the beautiful thing about the chilling application. Nobody's telling you go and buy from here, go and do this. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is go online, um, you know, sign up, register your account and start filling the application form. When you get to the essay part, I've already said copy the questions, go and write your essays in MS Word using microsoft word so that you'll get the correct word count when you're done with your essays and your editing and everything and you know that it's perfect copy and go and paste ensure that your essays do not exceed 500 words because if they do when you're copying to paste it's just going to stop at 500 so you're not going to any other place to write your essay you just write it and submit it in the online application form Peculiar asked another question if my offer of admission letter isn't ready before the end of application then how can i go about it i heard you cannot go back to your application after submission please help me make it more clear things please throw more light definitely that's why i'm here i'm here to throw more light so basically this year's application is going to end at november 3rd is going to end on is it on or at, hey jesus english it's going to end november 3rd 2020 as at that date, you are not required to get an offer of admission. All they need you to do is fill in the universities that you have applied to or that you are going to apply to. And they are going to give you a further deadline where you are going to submit your offer of admission. What do I mean? Fill in your application, write all your, you know, fill in the application and submit on third. Tell them, okay, fill in, oh, I've, I've, submit, I've applied to ABC University for XYZ course. You submit. 
then your you cannot edit that your application but you can still go back to your portal and upload documents for instance they will not ask you that oh that last day last day you must submit your reference letters you must submit your um you know uh, letters of admission no you can still go back and upload your admission offer later because i think you can still manage you can still upload documents up until may of the following year anyways that's what happened during my time i do, wouldn't know if that rule has changed for this year but i can assure you that you will be allowed to submit your um documents to upload your documents at a later date after november 3rd what they just need from you on november 3rd is you for you to complete that application form online and submit so but you have to submit with your transcript you have to submit with your university certificate and then at a later date you can now upload your reference letters if you don't have it now and you can now upload your offer of admission if you don't have it now i hope that throws more light to your confusion ID winning says this is really helpful thank you so much id peter says thanks for the transparency love you too i love you too peter diana says very helpful thank you so much guys if ever says nice video ma'am but you didn't answer questions from the previous video oh my god i'm so sorry definitely i'm answering now okay all right guys thing is i still have so many other questions from my instagram so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna end this video here because i don't want it to be too long because obviously i know it's long so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you've learned one or two things and how are your applications going don't worry like let's talk how are your applications really going what difficulties are you having ask me any question okay and so just you can go ahead to be dropping the questions in the comment section i will definitely answer you so please don't suffer in silence if you're struggling ask questions see let me tell you sometimes i see some questions and i feel like these questions are really really kind of uncalled for but i still end up answering you just have to answer because some sometimes the challenges one person has may not be the same as another person so go ahead to ask questions don't suffer in silence and don't do the wrong thing and after her submitting you now find out that you did the wrong thing by that time it will be too late you have about a month to you know submit this application so please ask questions do not suffer in silence do not be confused that is why this channel is here just to help you i hope you've learned something from this channel i hope you've learned something from this video if you have any questions drop it in the comment section and if i've been able to answer your questions let me also know in the comment section so that i will know that i have been of help to you <laughs> Thank you for staying tuned to the end of this video. Do want to give this video a thumbs up, like this video, share this video to people you know that this video will help. And don't forget to follow me on social media. My Instagram is at I am Couscous. My Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn is Kusame Ise. And follow me there because I drop real-time tips and we can have real-time conversations. Uh, not like YouTube that I have to come here just once in a week. So follow me on Instagram especially so that we can interact thank you so much for staying tuned to the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something make sure you show some love make sure you are diligent with your application and i wish you all the best i wish you good luck i wish you success i pray that you have testimonies all the way do not uh, do not forget to include god every step of the way don't think that you can do it by yourself because you know we can only do all things through christ who strengthens us so make sure that you take god along in this journey with you and also take couscous along <laughs> thank you so much and take care of yourself bye